Hi, I'm Tim Tyler, and this is a video about natural production and natural elimination. This pair of concepts represents an alternative to selection and drift when it comes to visualising and modelling the process of evolution. They're extremely basic concepts which arise naturally when attempting to generalise the Darwinian framework. An understanding that culture evolves along Darwinian lines has led many of those involved to wonder what other systems exhibit Darwinian dynamics. It has also prompted a revisiting of the foundations of evolutionary theory. I have a whole chapter about generalising Darwinism in my new memetics book, and here I'll attempt to describe some of the more significant results. Most people are familiar with the idea of natural selection. However, many people associate the idea with life and with living systems, whereas in fact natural selection represents the action of a more general principle that also applies to systems which are not alive. The truth of this has long been appreciated. For example, here is Richard Dawkins writing on page 12 of The Selfish Gene. Darwin's survival of the fittest is really a special case of a more general law of survival of the stable. The universe is populated by stable things. In fact, the familiar process of natural selection is not confined to biology. It affects everything that comes into existence. Whether or not it comes into existence via a copying process is irrelevant. Some abiotic examples of the effects of natural selection include pebbles, which tend to be made of hard materials because soft materials have eroded away. Islands tend to include hard rocky outcrops for a similar reason, the soft rock has washed away. And planets tend to have circular orbits and that's because elliptical orbits tend to be unstable and result in collisions. Evolution is often visualised in terms of natural selection, sexual selection and genetic drift. However, when generalising Darwinism, there is another useful perspective which can be obtained by considering evolution to be uh, the result of a balance between the forces of production and elimination. This idea is best introduced by considering the following new categories. Natural production refers to things coming into existence, and natural elimination refers to things going out of existence. These are extremely basic and fundamental ideas. They neatly encapsulate the aspects of evolution that do not involve copying. They thus apply to both biotic and abiotic systems. To illustrate these principles with some abiotic examples. So some examples of natural elimination include stars. That are the, ones, the stars that are observed are the ones that haven't previously burned out or exploded. And the atoms that we see are the ones that are stable and the ones with long half-lives. And the mountains that we see tend to be the ones that are covered in hard rocks because mountains covered in soft rocks just tend to get rapidly washed away. Natural elimination is balanced by natural production. So some examples of that include stars, which are produced by balls of gas condensing, atoms, which are mostly produced from other atoms by the process of, fi of fission and fusion, and mountains, which are produced by tectonic plate motion and erosion. The frequencies of the things that we observe in the world arise as a result of a mixture of processes of production and elimination. Things that are produced frequently and are difficult to eliminate are often observed, whereas things that are produced infrequently and are easy to eliminate are rarely observed. In my book, book I include a table of examples of these kinds of phenomena, including tall coin stacks, which are produced rarely and are destroyed easily, and pebbles, which are produced easily and are destroyed relatively rarely. If production rates exceed elimination rates, the number of entities grows, whereas if elimination rates exceed production rates, the number of entities shrinks. These ideas thus fit naturally into the framework provided by population genetics. Note that the approach here can be applied to anything with a measurable frequency. The entities do not have to form a natural kind. They do not need to be discrete or particulate either. So, for example, you could consider the category of men over six feet tall. In that case, production takes place during adolescence and elimin elimination takes place through death, limb loss, sex changes or degenerative osteoporosis. The results may be more interesting if dealing with natural kinds, but any kind of system where you can measure the frequency with which something occurs can be analysed in this way. Natural elimination and natural production are most familiar in the context of biological systems. There, production typically takes birth, place at birth and elimination takes place at death. If birth rates exceed death rates, then the population grows, while if death rates exceed birth rates, the population shrinks. 
In living systems, natural elimination is selection by death. Natural elimination is a bit like, sorry, a bit different from natural selection though. For one thing, it makes no attempt to exclude genetic drift. The nearest familiar concept in biology to natural production is probably sexual selection. However, sexual selection is not a very general principle. It isn't just sexual organisms that are able to produce varying numbers of offspring. Instead, the concept of differential reproductive success is sometimes used. Natural production is a more general concept than this, though, since it can be applied to both biotic and abiotic systems. Another way of considering the difference is to see natural production as a kind of mirror image of natural elimination, in that production creates and elimination destroys. However, there isn't really any corresponding mirror concept for the idea of natural selection. Since biological processes involve copying, what is naturally produced is constantly being magnified, while the things that are naturally eliminated play an ever-diminishing role. Thus, iterative application of natural production and natural elimination can result in adaptive evolution. Framing things in terms of natural selection and sexual selection reflects the ways in which these ideas were discovered historically, but sexual selection is not a very general concept. Thinking in terms of natural elimination and natural production results in a more general and broadly applicable framework, one that extends deeply into many kinds of abiotic systems. When taught at all, natural selection is currently taught in biology classes. Natural elimination and natural production should probably be taught in physics classes or mathematics classes, and they should be ta taught first of all. These are pretty basic explanatory principles broadly comparable in scope to the idea of entropy or self-organisation. This material may seem very basic, and it is. However, it is not so basic as to be obvious. Something like it does need teaching to children in science classes, with presentation along the lines given here, and with natural selection in biology being given, given as an example of the results of these principles being applied to a system which involves copying. For more about this topic, please see my book on memetics, which is out now. Um, enjoy.